Hello parrot lovers, welcome to Discover Parrots and welcome to Paradise Park. This is the birthplace of World Parrot Trust, a charity working for the conservation of wild parrots and for the well-being of companion parrots. This is also the place um, where you can find a very good collection of uh, different species of parrot and finally this is a place where you can see um, free flying parrots, large macaws uh, as you would in uh, a Costa Rican uh, nature reserve. Let's see what you can find today. From the entrance I'm going to the open area where the free flying bird show takes place. There are picnic tables and a stage where some parrots perform for the visitors. I'll be back here to enjoy the event along with the other visitors. But first, I'm visiting Parrot Jungle, with huge aviaries surrounded by lush green vegetation and beautiful water features. Then, I'm going round the park to see all the parrots, many of which are seldom seen in collections. A number of rare species breed here every year and are part of conservation projects. They are all kept in excellent conditions, in pairs or groups, in aviaries that allow them to fly, with lots of enrichment items and smart privacy solutions. You can even observe their behavior via nest cameras and screens. You can see and photograph many species of parrot just by strolling on the park's lovely trails. With a collection of about 1,200 individuals, there is more to see here than the parrots. There is a flower meadow, a fun farm, a red pandas enclosure, a birds of prey flying area, a penguin pool and other attractions. In the Australian aviary, you can hand feed rainbow lorikeets and see other birds from down under, including laughing kookaburras. Abyssinian ground hornbills and many other exotic birds are housed in richly planted aviaries. I am delighted by the diversity and beauty of the exhibit. Paradise Park was founded by Mike Reynolds, who started a collection of parrots and other exotic birds. The park opened to the public in 1973. Concerned for the conservation of endangered parrots, Mike Reynolds founded the World Parrot Trust in 1989. The charity has run conservation projects for over 70 species of parrot in 43 countries. Members receive Citizen, a quarterly magazine with updates on conservation work, field trips and studies, photos and lots of information about parrots. The World Parrot Trust also publishes advice for companion parrot keepers, including on site at Paradise Park. The gift shop offers a good selection of parrot books by Rosemary Lowe. Some are of interest for breeders, others for companion parrot keepers or conservationists. Conservation work takes place right here in the breeding aviaries for rare species. 
Mitchell's lorikeets are almost extinct in the wild, but they breed well at Paradise Park. You will see many other rare and endangered parrots at Paradise Park and it feels good to see that captive breeding is like an insurance policy against their extinction. As you can hear, parrots can be loud. Behind me, we have these blue-throated macaws. Interesting about these uh, blue-throated macaws, they are not just part of the exhibition, but they are part of a conservation program, a captive breeding program, and some of them have already been sent to Bolivia to be sent into wild uh, to repopulate those areas where they became almost extinct. One of the rarest parrots in the world, these uh, are bred here at Paradise Park. Red Bill Chaffs also breed at Paradise Park. Operation Chaff has been launched in 1987 and the species has been reintroduced to Cornwall and other places where it became extinct more than 100 years ago. Let's go back to the free flying area. So this is the place. These are the scarlet macaws of uh, Paradise Park. A few years ago they had a great green macaws. Oh, there's an Amazon parrot. There was another one earlier here. And this is the area where they fly freely. They come back to their um, aviary, which is that one. Uh, very nice to see them. Scarlet macaws are the stars of the show. I can't wait to see them flying free after they finish harassing the local herring gulls. They are getting ready and so am I. Let the show begin. Military macaws were the main attraction a few years ago, but many other birds were also performing for the public. Parrots of different species were flying on command to and from the park trainers. Visitors too had a chance to handle parrots during the event. The show was on at the same time every day and it had a very structured schedule. Apart from parrots, you could see other birds such as kookaburras displaying a range of natural behaviors that you can't see in an aviary. Things were very different in the summer of 2020. Not only the scarlet macaws were the main characters, but the whole show has changed. Instead of performing on command for an hour or so, the birds are free to do what they please for many hours a day. Amazon parrots are part of their show now. This is watching parrots at its best. Observing the natural behavior of these birds at liberty in their social group for hours and hours makes me truly happy. Sure, this is not their native habitat, 
but all the elements are there. You can watch them climbing trees, clipping off branches and leaves, preening each other, harassing other birds, enjoying the sun and the rain, and of course, flying. The parrots have their first meal in the morning, then they are released when the visitors are in the park. The birds are free to do what they wish until the afternoon, when the keepers call them back to their large aviaries. This gives them about 6 hours of complete freedom every day, so they are not just free-flying birds, but actually free-range parrots. This is amazing to see, but I don't recommend you try this at home. In September 2020, 5-year-old Skittles the Scarlet Macaw went missing after a storm. He was recovered the following day in Port Leven. That's over 12 kilometers, almost 8 miles away from his home. What you see here is a very special exhibit. These birds are wild budgerigars, not the usual colony of domesticated budgies that you see in other zoos. It's a rare chance to see the original budgerigars with no color, shape or size mutations. You can't find these in your local pet store. The budgerigars aviary is the best place to end this visit because they are my favorite parrot. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I made you uh, like the idea of coming here to Cornwall to visit Paradise Park. Check the links below. You'll find uh, their webpage. See you next time. Bye-bye.